I haven't uh, soloed for close on 25 years now, but from what I remember, this is incredibly realistic. I feel as if I'm going to fall out of the aircraft. Big hello from the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching. And let's get started. The unit arrives in two large boxes with a combined weight of something around 80 kg. The base unit in one, which fortunately is predominantly pre-assembled. The main assembly for the upper portion was fairly straightforward and there's helpful video guides available on DOF Reality's website. There are multiple videos and the website could be more helpful in directing you to the right one. My unit included a number of optional extras including the Honeycomb Alpha and Bravo mounting plate, the three-piece HOTAS kit, the emergency stop button, and one I consider absolutely essential, the cyber cover. It's made from metal, covers the working parts and prevents any chance of accidents. The unit supplied to me by DOF Reality is their H3 or Hero 3 model. It features three degrees of movement or freedom, pitch, roll and yaw. It came supplied with the standard motors and there is an upgrade available to the SFU gearbox providing smoother motion but at a cost of 200 US per motor. My unit would require two. Unless you're planning on something like acrobatics or something of that nature, I think the standard motors are fine. The price points shown are clearly aimed at the enthusiast market. Currently, DOF Reality offer the best value in terms of motion simulation in the market, as far as I'm aware, by some considerable margin of 50 to 70%. One surprise I had is the rig doesn't take up any more room than a standard sim rig. So overall, in terms of size, it's quite manageable. With the unit, you get a license to use Sim Racing Studio software, which includes a test function. Recommended you carry this out to make sure everything's assembled correctly before going on and configuring your unit. Operating the software is simple and intuitive. Most settings can be operated by a simple slider bar. And here's a quick look at my unit after assembly and installation of the various peripherals. My setup is to accommodate GA flying and my Thrustmaster Warthog for helicopters and such like. It doesn't come with a chair, you have to source that yourself. And I selected Next Level Racing's ERS-1. And I did so because it's extremely light, comes with sliding rails, and has a reputation for durability. One of the critical factors in a motion simulator is balance, and this chair seemed to fit the build down to a T. However, word of warning, I couldn't line up the sliding rail fixing points with those on the crossbars that came with the H3. The result was I had to drill and modify, and having a seat I could slide forward and backwards I considered essential. Choose your chair wisely. If you're aware of a chair model that fits easily, drop it in the comments below for the benefit of other users. Fixing my selected peripherals was a breeze. In addition to the Alpha and Bravo, I have the Knobster installed, Thrustmaster Warthog, and the Thrustmaster rudder pedals. But I will replace these with the Honeycomb units once they're out. Well, the proof of the pudding's in the eating, as they say, so uh, we're going to give the H3 a full test in the Beechcraft Bonanza and we'll be taking off shortly. But first of all, I just want to cover off a few points, if I may. The first one is, you can see I'm in my favorite VR headset at the moment. That's the Pico 4. It's the ideal headset for this type of simming, simply because it's wireless, has a great FOV and great image quality. And the inside of the cockpit that uh, image that you're seeing that's being recorded directly inside of this headset and then transferred to the pc for editing afterwards another point worth noting if you're using vr with a motion platform is there's a slight mismatch between the headset movement and tracking and the movement of the motion platform itself for example if you're banking very steeply to the left Although you're keeping your head in the same place in the cockpit, the VR headset is detecting movement and you can find your head position in the cockpit changing. This only really becomes a factor when doing more of the extreme movements 
and Steve VR Flight Sim Guy recently did a video highlighting and demonstrating the need for some form of motion compensation very well indeed. I'll leave links to his video in the notes below. There is a hardware solution using a small piece of hardware and some freeware software. It's a small inclinometer and in addition you require a cable. It'll set you back about £50 or the equivalent in US dollars. I have purchased this and I'll be doing a video in the future showing installation and setup for anyone interested. There is a sort of partial fix under the tuning tab on SimWorks Studio's software where you set the parameters for your rig. Under Advance, change your pitch from angle to rate. This doesn't eliminate the problem, but it does reduce the amount of movement experienced. Changing parameters using the slider bars is dead simple. The software auto detects the aircraft that you're flying, so you can set up individual profiles for different aircraft. A very handy feature. My particular focus is using a motion platform with VR, but of course it can be used with a monitor as well. Quite popular for those using racing sims. And interestingly, Doff Reality do something they call the Magic Box, which provides PS5 and Xbox compatibility. Something I might have to have a look at in the future. Let's get our handbrake off. I will try and not move my head too much. Um, and let's give this a go and see what we can do. Starting to move. I'm getting a little bit of rumble, a little bit of haptic feedback through the seat. Advancing now to full throttle. 40 knots. 50. Now on 60 knots. And let's rotate. I'm going to pull up a little bit more than I would normally just to exaggerate the movement. Just watching my airspeed, I don't want to stall. Gear up. Whoa! That's quite extreme. I feel like I'm going to fall out of the cockpit. Whoa! Speed picking up now. Flaps up. Well, this is amazing. I think if there's a missing link or a missing element of my simming, it's been motion. The difference is, is quite noticeable. Wow. This isn't my first flight. I have done a number of test flights, obviously, as I've been playing around with the various settings and so on. But um, every time I take off or land, if you've ever flown in the real world, you get this mixture of apprehension and excitement. And being in a motion simulator brings on exactly that same feeling. And I must say that with the haptic feedback that you get and the feeling of motion. Now, the rig may not look like it's moving a lot to you, but to me, um, it, it feels significant just bank to the left now and bank to the right wow you can see my head slightly out of position now be interesting to see how that works once I've put in the hardware uh, fix for the comp motion compensation but wow okay And of course, as this is the H3, we've got the uh, yaw from the rudder input as well. So let's just give that a go. First of all, right rudder, just feeding in slowly right rudder. Yeah, that's very realistic, actually. Now, I don't claim to be an experienced pilot of any kind. Um, I haven't flown solo for close on 25 years now so I'm not really qualified to comment but from what I recall this is 
incredibly realistic. This is very much what it feels like. And if you're wondering about how much noise does the uh, does the H3 generate, well, it's amazingly quiet. There is some rumble, but very, very little. It's not like a butt kicker, for example, or anything of that nature. Putting our nose down now. Here we go. And slowly pulling up. Low over the uh, runway. Oh my goodness me. How realistic is this? Hello to the tower. Oh wow. I guess I should be talking more but I'm actually even though this isn't my first flight I'm actually takes my breath away a little bit about how realistic it is. You know there's a famous saying in flight sim as real as it gets. Well, this is about as real as you can get when flying on a PC. This is incredible. Gear down. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> I felt that. Power out. Gear up. I can feel a slight rumble of that gear coming up and bang. Don't know if it showed on the video, but you can really feel that gear. Oh, going down. Coming up. Bang, and it's up. Oh, that's incredible. What I haven't got installed yet is the HF8 haptic seat pad. And I will be putting that in and that's going to add more haptic feedback to my flight. And that's going to be amazing. And uh, I hope to do that soon. That's, that's going to be very, very interesting indeed. Trying to remember not to move my head too much, so apologies if this is uh, uh, a little bit jerky and what have you. It's just that in my excitement, uh, I do forget. I love these steep banks in the H3. Wow! I really get that feeling of motion and movement. I really feel like I'm flying. That's the long and the short of it. There's the runway. Let's go and try and come in for a landing. Just increase my pot pitch and mixture. I'm a little high and so what I'm going to do is try and line up and see whether or not I can do a forward slip lose a lot of altitude by feeding in opposite rudder and aileron. Here we go. I do need to adjust the sensitivity on these rudder pedals. Whoa, whoa. But you can see me losing altitude very quickly now. That's amazing. Right, let's go round. Come back on the pitch a little bit. We'll just do a quick circle and we'll land. Well, I must say to Doff Reality, well done. For the price point, this is actually quite amazing. Now, there's no doubt that this product is aimed at the enthusiast. 
the H3 as I'm flying with it now is just a tad under 3,000 US dollars. The basic unit comes in at about two and a half thousand US dollars for the three degrees of motion. You can get the H2 which is doesn't have the yaw um, although I would recommend you do get that because it really adds to the overall experience but you can get that for about two probably about two thousand US dollars once you add in the cyber cover and that type of thing now is that expensive well not really in terms of comparison to other motion simulators that are out in the market and it is aimed at the enthusiast at the really dedicated simmer and for the dedicated simmer two to three thousand US dollars for a considerable update in terms of the overall flying experience well I don't think that's overpriced at all for me it's value for money absolutely touchdown that was very smooth hardly felt a bang at all oh feel that heave as I press the brakes oh, ho, ho. let's just taxi over here well that's the h3 it's an amazing experience I still have some settings to tweak etc and to put in motion compensation but uh, I'm very impressed it adds an element to my flight simming which is and I almost hate to say this because it's used so often for so many different things uh, and it's a completely abused term particularly on YouTube but for me the DOF H3 reality motion simulator well it's a game changer absolutely Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. There will certainly be more coming on the channel on the DOF H3 motion simulator. What an amazing piece of kit. Thank you very much for joining me. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon. And bye for now.